In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He looked at what he had created, and he liked it. Hey, Charlie, how long for them hot dogs? I've been waiting more than 20 minutes for that. Welcome to another episode. My name is Timber Robin, and today we are going to look at what to keep in mind when you go microphone buying. Yeah, let's hit that intro. Hey there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Sketchy Tech, the vlog where we look at tech in general, but mostly focused on the South African voice industry. My name is Timber Robin and today we're looking at microphones. I don't need to tell you the microphone industry is massive. massive. Yes. Oh yeah, hang on, before we move on. You've noticed my little friend here. Yeah. So I was looking back at a couple of the other other videos and I realized the audio wasn't as crisp as I thought I would have liked it to sound. And hopefully it sounds a little bit better. You guys, let me know what you think. Or maybe I should just go back to the old sound. I don't know. Back to the topic at hand today, though, we're talking about microphones and what to keep in mind when you're considering buying a microphone. So as beginners, it can be a little bit overwhelming because the microphone industry is huge. It's huge. There's microphones for every conceivable, imaginable scenario. So which one do you pick and which one is right for you? That's not a question that I can directly answer because ladies and gentlemen, there's no single microphone that fits everyone. There's no one microphone like ah, that is going to be amazing for every single person and every single voice. You kind of have to trial and error and that's a bit of a difficult thing, but hopefully this information will help you get through that process faster. First, our first port of call, you're going to need to decide whether you want to go with XLR or USB microphones. So I've set up my two babies over here. I have the Lewitt that you've seen in other videos, and then we've got the SE Electronics. This is my XLR microphone. This is a USB microphone. So talking about USB microphones to kick... Whoa! That shouldn't have happened. Okay, crisis averted. I didn't screw it on properly when I was putting this whole setup together. My bad. Talking about USB microphones, we'll look at the pros and the cons. First of all, the pros of the USB microphones, they are simple. They're easy to set up. So any beginner, it's it's just plug and play. You've got one side goes into the mic, one side goes into your computer. If your software and your, your audio drivers are up to date, you're pretty much good to go. Back in the day, you used to get a USB microphone and it was very, very subpar. Lots of people wouldn't take you seriously as a voice artist if you used a USB microphone. But nowadays, these things are amazing and they sound great. So they're simple and they sound good. Another thing is that they're mobile. So if you're having to record in a cupboard like I used to have to, or sometimes I do still do on holiday, you can just pick this up. You can set it up in your cupboard with your laptop and you can record and then you just pack it up. It's easy to travel with. So that's a big plus. Simple, mobile, sounds really good. Cons, on the other hand, because everything is built into the little microphone like this, if something breaks, which is a likely thing, you know, this is life. If something breaks, because everything is built into the microphone, you can't troubleshoot, you can't work out if it's the actual mic, if it's the interface. All in all though, USB microphones, a pretty good pick. Moving over to the SE Electronics over here, that is our XLR microphone. So off the bat, I will say that the pros of XLRs is you have a wider selection of professional microphones. So you can start the entry level mic and build up as you go. You can buy a slightly better mic and, and a better mic until you're a super professional. The other thing is you can upgrade your cables. So looking at this for instance, I'm using the Samson, but it is plugged into my interface all the way behind me. So this cable is running all the way down here. It goes down over the edge there, under the table, under the back, and into my interface plugged in over there. And I'm recording that audio onto my computer as we're doing this now. I could never do that with this Lewitt DGT650. It's just the cable's not long enough, and finding a longer replacement cable is either impossible or <laughs> crazy expensive. So that's the nice thing about the XLR mic and, and setup, is you can upgrade independent elements as you get better and better and make more money. 
Another pro for the XLR, and it kind of ties in with everything that I've been saying, is if you have a problem, if something's not working, you can troubleshoot it fairly easily. You can swap out your XLR cable if need be and find out or pinpoint exactly where the problem is rather than sending your microphone in and having someone tell you that it's going to cost a million bucks to fix. The cons of the XLR microphone though, hmm. So the XLR mics do sometimes come in at a similar price range to the USB microphones, which sounds fine at first, but then you've got to remember all this extra stuff that goes with it. Your startup costs will be considerably more with an XLR setup because you got to buy all these bits and pieces. With the bits and pieces in mind, it's also not as mobile as the USB microphones. So if I wanted to quickly set up in my closet, I would have to take all these cables, my interface, and just everything to, to the cupboard with me, which is just going to be a nightmare. It won't be fun to do. The other thing is USB microphones usually come with the shock mount and a stand. In my experience, the XLR microphones usually only come with the microphone and sometimes if you're lucky, a shock mount, but you're almost always going to have to factor in a stand also. All in all though, USB microphones are making strides in terms of quality and they're very good. But at the end of the day, I think XLR if offers you and in turn your clients a lot more in terms of quality and what you can do because you've got a lot more control with an XLR. Next life-changing decision you have to make is the choice between a condenser or a dynamic microphone. There are also ribbon microphones, but to be honest, those are far too sophisticated and expensive for the likes of you or I. Let's take a look at dynamic microphones. So dynamic microphones are usually microphones that look like this. They're most commonly found in stage performances. One good example of a dynamic microphone is the very famous Shure SM58, which you've definitely seen at least a million times in your life. They are great because they're quite sturdy, so you can drop them. They can be abused and abused and abused. Dynamic microphones come in considerably, considerably cheaper than most of the condenser microphones. The downside to the dynamic microphone, however, is it's got a very prominent mid to low range. So it picks up everything that's more bassy and that's why it does well on things like radio radio djs love them because they can get that real boomy hey you're welcome to radio 9.5 you know they get that sort of sound out of these which is fine if you're going for radio but we're going for a whole more classy genre altogether we want all those beautiful top end sounds and everything that's in your voice so that's why the industry standard is condenser microphones they're great because they'll pick up every beautiful little hint and um, sound and nuance in your voice. The downside to that is it will pick up all the other stuff too. So your neighbor starting his car and the cat meowing in the passage. So that is a little bit of a downside to the condenser microphones, which you probably won't get on the dynamic microphone because it's not as sensitive. All in all, the decision is up to you. Dynamic mics are sturdy and they can take a lot more abuse. They're less sensitive. So if you're in a room that's not treated so well, they do okay. But they are very boomy. Next, polar patterns. Microphones, if you didn't know, have things called mic patterns, polar patterns, or pickup patterns. And that basically indicates which area or where the microphone picks up sound. We have three common or predominant polar patterns that we'll run through with you right now. We have the cardioid pattern or the unidirectional. We have a figure eight and we have an omnidirectional. So let me break that down for you. As we said, these are the areas in which a microphone picks up sound. If we take our first one, which is a figure eight or a bidirectional polar pattern, if you're looking at your microphone, it basically means that it will pick up sound directly in front and directly behind the microphone in a sort of a bubble shape. So if I'm talking to the microphone like this, everything that happens in this area and everything that happens behind the microphone in the same sort of shape will be picked up equally. This will be great if you're maybe doing a podcast and you only have one microphone, you and um, your guests can sit either side and it will pick you up both very, very well. Next polar pattern would be the omnidirectional. So omni meaning all or everywhere. That means the microphone will pick up everything in this 360 degree radius. If it's close enough to be heard, it will be heard. That is probably not great for voiceovers and people who are starting off because it's just going to pick up everything everywhere. If I'm talking here, it's going to hear reflections off the wall coming into the back of the microphone. I would stay away from an omnidirectional microphone if the microphone only has one option. 
The last one, and this is the one that's mostly preferred in the voiceover industry or for um, home voice artists, is a cardioid pattern. If we're looking at this Samson, it's only picking up what's in front. It ignores everything from the sides and to the back of the microphone. That is really cool, especially if you're in a room that isn't well treated. It's going to ignore everything else and just focus on what's coming from the front. As we said before, a lot of microphones or some microphones have a set cardioid pattern, but some microphones have options. So if we're looking at the Samson, the Samson has three options. You have an omnidirectional, you have a figure eight, and you have a super cardioid, which is similar to cardioid that we're looking for, except it has a small pickup pattern or pickup point just behind the back of the microphone. Not as big as in front, but a little one. The Lewitt over here has a, uh, a figure eight and then a cardioid, which is great. So you can pick up on both sides or you can just isolate one side or the front side and talk into that. And then this one is a great example. This is our SE Electronic. If you you can see over there just on the front that says this is a cardioid microphone you can't change it you can't do anything this one only picks up in front so this is an ideal little buy if you don't need all the other options always make sure you check that because there are a couple of microphones out there that are only omnidirectional and you can't change it which eh, won't be nice here at the last point and we're going to talk about price now, price is going to vary from person to person. We all have different amounts of disposable income. There are some really good microphones on the market at the moment that aren't too badly priced. We have the Samson like this. That's the USB version. I think it's the C01 USB. And that one retails for about 1600 bucks, And that's going to be a great place to start. When it comes to buying microphones, cheap isn't necessarily nasty. Just because a microphone is cheaper than a thousand bucks doesn't mean it's going to be a bad quality mic but do be mindful to check all the specs make sure that it's not uh, omnidirectional only and most importantly check on how it connects because we made this mistake um, I've just done a microphone review on a little microphone I'm going to show you now but I'll show you why the connectivity is such a big thing so this is a safe microphone from Red Dragon and this is similar to a lot of little microphones that I'm seeing on take a lot at the moment including the BM 800 which is coming in at nearly a thousand rand already and the problem comes in with this little connection so unlike these microphones that all connect to your USB socket freeing up your aux for your headphones to fit in this little guy is going to take your aux socket and if you only have one like me you'll have nowhere to plug in your headphones. With that said, another noticeable difference is the quality of the audio that you're going to be able to produce. And this is why we said at the beginning of the video is have a listen. If you can, obviously, I mean, you can't just walk into a shop and start plugging stuff in. But if you can plug in a microphone and listen to what it sounds like once it's played back. Last but not least, there is a decent secondhand market for microphones out there. So for instance, I bought this SE Electronics for uh, a thousand rand maybe two years ago it's still going strong i still use it nearly every other day and that is just 400 bucks more than what this would have been and it is infinitely better so it's almost time for me to go but i had a quick thought i have little need for this little microphone so maybe in the next video we're going to be doing headphones but maybe uh, in the next video i will give this microphone to someone i know i didn't give it the greatest review but maybe this could be the stepping stone to getting yourself to a proper microphone um i'll figure out how to do a competition we'll give it away to one lucky subscriber who comments or something like that i'll let you know so if you're interested in maybe getting your hands on that little microphone make sure that you check out our next episode and the best way not to miss it is make sure you subscribe and if you enjoyed this video give us a like it makes my heart happy i'm going to play you out with two recordings one done on this microphone here the samson and i'm going to do one on the safe at so have a listen to them and see if you can hear the quality difference anyways ladies and gentlemen that has been another episode of sketchy tech my name is timber robin and it has been a pleasure voicing with you all right, so this is the Seyfert microphone. This is the, the little one that I can get it to work on my own laptop, but I got it to work on my wife's laptop. So guys, this is the dynamic microphone. I'm just testing it with my voice to let you guys hear what it sounds like in its most natural state, that it's a little bit muddy with uh, enhanced mid and low ends. So my voice will sound very deep and muffled.
and this is our XLR condenser microphone. As you can hear, the top end is a lot more prominent, so it's not all lost at the bottom end, which is nice. It gives it a sort of crisp sound.